Welcome to the Love Fly podcast, Paul Tizard, Fear of Flying Coach. And today we welcome somebody who's been prolific in the Facebook group, the Love Fly Facebook group, Frank Sanders. Welcome. I've got to say straight away that aside from welcome thanks so much for sharing your journey and all those pictures all those updates it was amazing so uh, i was quite jealous to be honest oh well thank you um i can say almost 100 percent, almost 100 percent definitively that it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the podcast i may not have taken that trip at all wow yeah and i mean that i absolutely mean that because i i don't know how much i should ramble but uh yeah ramble away trip, it's your episode it, <laughs> In November, we had a flight to Ireland. I've been to Ireland four times now. Mm. I just love the place so much, but I've never been on a short trip. We took we were going to take a four-day trip. Uh, me and my girl booked the flights. We, we paid for the hotels, paid for the rental car. I convinced a friend to go with us, and uh, he paid for the flight, but I paid for everything else for him. I That day, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even go to the airport. I freaked out so bad and lost everything. And I gave my friend all the money he spent on the flights because – he didn't want to go without me, and he wouldn't have bought the tickets had I right. not done that. So right. I can't okay. so say it was a day for you. <laughs> yes, it was. I, thankfully, one of the hotels forgot to charge me, even though it said it was non-refundable. So I was happy about that. But so, I can so, so, so how did that, that I have, happen? Oh, how did that happen then? How did what happen? I'm sorry. So how did you get to the point where you like literally couldn't go to the airport or anything? Is that was that a slow build up or was that a complete surprise? I think, and you've mentioned this on the podcast before, but I think part of it had to do with just general anxiety of flying but part of it was uh i like to you know when you go transatlantic you're always flying at night so i like to sleep on the planes as much as possible mm -hmm. so what i do is I, I go to the gym in the morning for work as usual and i always work that day as late as i can and i had without a doubt the hardest most stressful work day in maybe my 24 year career doing it so i think all that anxiety and that stress when it came time i left work and as soon as i got home I panicked so bad. There was just no chance I was going to get on that flight. I'm actually a little anxiety ridden right now just thinking about that. I told my girl, she's been so great about this because that's not yeah. the first flight I haven't gotten on. But I told her, I said, I, I can't, I'm, I can't even do it. And I called my mm -hmm. friend and I said, I'm so sorry. He goes, Hey, you know, well, I'll be at the airport waiting for you because you'll probably change your mind. I said, like, dude, there's no way I'm changing my mind. <laughs> like, I felt so bad. I felt like, like you, you've uh, had guests on that talk about this, but I felt like mm -hmm. such a failure. And it, it also worried me because, travel is by far my favorite thing i've ever done in my life so yeah, it was like yeah man the thing i love the most i can't even do it because of this fear and it's you've never had that fear i know you have a fear you said of uh was it speaking in public is that something you had anxiety with yeah 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 so it's like you do understand anxiety mm. that makes no sense whatsoever but it's mm. so intense and I, I guess everybody who's listening to this understands it or they wouldn't yeah, so it's like uh, I can say with that flight that was in November because it was going to be for my birthday, I could prove that I had not gotten on a flight before. So when this trip came up, I mean, the money, it was a it was like you said, it was a pretty big trip. It was almost a month. It was four different countries, seven flights at over 40 hours total. And I was like, if I don't get on this flight, that's mm. tens of thousands of dollars gone. <laughs> so I, I, I kind of had a feeling that I was going to get on it, but I had to do what I always do, which is at least a month before I fly, I listen to your podcast. I go through them all and I do them multiple times. I listen to the fear of flying workbook and I watch a ton of Noel Phillips videos. And yeah. if the list, do you know Noel Phillips? Yeah. Or know of Noel Phillips? If the listeners don't know, he's a guy who literally his entire YouTube channel is enjoying flights. He literally books flights. And then he reviews the flights when he's on them. And he'll do my favorite one that I watch all the time is he does an around the world in 24 hours where he literally just hops flights just to get around the entire planet back to his same spot back in England in 24 hours. And when I watch those videos, it just reminds me that it's so standard that this guy does it just for the hell of it. He doesn't have to get from A to B. He wants to get on the plane. And it's, yeah, yeah. And when I'm on a particularly bumpy flight, I think about that. I'm like, would, would Noel be worried about this? No, mm. no, he wouldn't. It's so uneventful. He doesn't even put it in his videos. But yeah, that's I, really it, interesting. <laughs> so before this trip, I really, really binged it. Um, I've done therapy before that. That didn't really work for me. Yeah. But I, it's, uh, I saturate myself with flying. 
I listen to flying podcasts. I, I listen to flying audiobooks. I watch a ton of flying videos. I, I read everything. It's I re, I go on the Reddit boards. I go on the Love Fly. Like it, it really helps. It, it helps so much because then by the time you get to the airport and you look at the plane, you don't even. I, I personally am not really training myself. I'll pop on the podcast. I'll listen to it, but I don't really to how do I put it? I don't have to really work at it at that point. Yeah, it's in yeah. my blood. So tell but us a bit about you in terms of, you know, what your fears like, how it manifests itself. Just to sort um, of give us a, get us a sense of, yeah. of what you've had to overcome. Yeah, sure. No problem. Well, I don't know where the fear came from. I remember flying when I was really young from uh, New York to Florida we we were landing and I don't remember how old I was, I was five, seven years, something like that. And the pilot made an announcement that uh, we're landing in Clearwater. And I look out the window and I see water and I'm like, wow, we're, the plane's going to land in the water. And I don't remember being scared about that, but more like, can this happen? Is this true? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and yeah. And uh, I had to fly for a friend's funeral in 2007. I recorded part of that flight on my phone and I was very scared during that flight. Mm. That, that flight had me terrified and I, was that, I don't was know. Was that the first time, do you think? Yeah, it's the first time I can remember being afraid of flying. Mm. I flew before that. I flew in my early 20s, late teens, but I don't remember anything about the flight. I remember arriving at the airport, but I, I have a notoriously bad memory. <laughs> Take something uh, special to really stick out. Actually, like I said, I have that video. I don't know where it is, but the plane's taken off and it's an old flip phone. It was, I think, probably a Razor. And I'm like <sighs> hyperventilating as the plane's taken off. And the funny thing is, Paul, is I've never had a bad flight. I've never. And I've, mm. I travel quite a bit. I've been on some bumpy flights. And on this update that I posted on uh, Facebook, I mean, we had some what I would consider scary landings. But there were, there were never – we didn't have to go around. It was nothing like that. But I've never had a flight where you see online. It, but for some reason, it's the, the anxiety is there. And I do know it's a loss of control. I know that because I won't let anybody drive me anywhere. If we're going somewhere, I have to drive. I have to be in control. So the large part of it's that. Yes. Um, yeah. There's a, I don't know if there's claustrophobia involved, but my big uh, flying fear is I'm afraid that I'm going to be afraid. Mm. I'm not afraid that I'm going to lose control, but as it starts bumping, the bumps don't scare me. It's what's coming next. And nothing's ever came next. Yet my body still does that. And even now, even on these flights, even with the uh, desens desensitization, it still happens when when it gets bumpy i still it, i can't watch a movie on a flight because as i'm watching the movie two bumps i look out the window a bump right. i look out the window yeah but at least i can get on the planes now and i'm actually mm -hmm. really looking forward to the next trip we have booked <laughs> mm -hmm. but i know i have to work at it i'm going to have to work at it i'm going to yeah. have to listen to the podcast i'm going to have to read the books but there's hope that i it, it can i can do it i can do it and i think eventually i can learn to enjoy it too I get excited seeing the planes pull up and I get excited seeing people uh, be playing and be like, wow, and you hear the engines. And I do. I, I genuinely get excited seeing planes take off. Like, look how cool that is. But once I, once my fear triggers, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. That's, that's, um, that's what I want. And I, want <laughs> I like people to talk. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never shut up. My fear triggered, triggers sometimes before the airport, obviously, uh, with my flight to Ireland, but mm. it'll always trigger when people start standing up, getting ready to board. That's when my anxiety is at its peak. It just boosts up heavy. When I sit down on the plane, the anxiety is there. It's a little less. And the second we leave the we take off, the, the anxiety drops a lot. Wow. So something about the bumping and the engines that, that kind of take on, taking off and landing isn't terrifying for me. It's the cruising. That's the worst part because I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be so long. But when we're taking off, the engines are getting out or bumping, or bumping, bumping. And then as soon as it leaves the ground, it settles a bit. You know, that, mm. that shaking is gone and you feel that floatingness. Um, I used to be afraid of the engine pullback for the noise control because yeah. of that feeling. Now, I still don't like the sensation, but I'm not afraid of it. And I know you it's coming. You understand it as well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but for me, I mean, we all have different triggers. Like some people, I love booking my flights. I mean, I genuinely love it. My favorite thing about travel besides being there is planning i love checking okay this hotel's next to this thing should they do a bnb &B? oh man look at this flight this flight's a little bit cheaper but it arrives at it it's so fun to book flights but you have listeners who they get so scared when they book it that's right yeah mine my anxiety 
doesn't even start the day before it'll start the day of and even then it's not bad it's mm. when i go to the airport it bumps up about 50 percent if i make it to the airport and then when i'm in the airport i'm too busy going through security by the yeah. way everybody tsa pre-check made a huge difference on this trip we went through security at jfk in five minutes literally five minutes that anxiety was gone from that but then get through security do that i always find the gate first no matter what i have to do and then uh the wait is so long that I'm really not scared during the wait because I'm just getting bored. Mm. Then you see the gate agents show up and you see people start to stand up and then I completely lose my mind. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and so, so it's got Frank, was that the same? Cause you were away for a month. Yes. Was sir. it the same every single flight you did that exactly that pattern or did it decrease no. or it decreased it, once I'm over the ocean, it's a lot better because the flights over there generally the, the longest flight we had on that trip was, from London to Cairo. And that was a little over five and a half hours. So that's nothing compared to the eight hours here, eight and a half hours there. But yeah, the the level of anxiety on the different parts leading up to the flight are all this, they're all there, but they're way diminished. As a, if we said getting on the British Airways flight this trip to head over the seas, if we say that was a 10, which it wasn't, but here's our sliding scale. If it was a 10, I would say, all the other trips when I'm at the airport and they begin boarding, it's a four to five. So it's a lot less, it's there, but the mm. same same scale applies. Getting to the airport, the anxiety is picking up a little bit. It's yeah. all that. Yeah. Um, the smaller, the shorter flights, I almost don't even panic on the shorter flights. I don't like it. They bump a lot more because they're playing smaller, but I know that I'm going to be in the experience for such a much a shorter time that mm. in my head, if things go wrong, it's only going to be for a small amount of time. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> so it's interesting, isn't it? So you've got sort of some certain rules about the length of flights. You tell yourself slightly different things. Yeah, yeah. Your I do. trigger point. I, I haven't had that trigger. No one's exactly said that when people stand up to make the way. That's been the the moment where it was at fifty percent. <laughs> it probably is for a lot of people, but no one has been as specific as you've just said it. You know, like this <laughs> that that moment. You know, it's. I think it's because I tr like. Unlike probably a lot of your uh, listeners, I do travel a lot because I absolutely love traveling. So mm. I do get on a lot of planes. The trip that I took, most of my trips are that long for that many, for, for, through that many countries. That's pretty standard for me. So I do get on a lot of flights. Obviously, what killed it? COVID killed it. You know, we couldn't get on planes. And right yeah. after COVID, uh, right before COVID, we took a big trip. We went, we went to Ireland, Romania, Israel, Greece, and Spain. And it was like this big, amazing trip. We got back, COVID hit. We had some trips planned. They got canceled, not our fault. So I didn't feel guilty about that. Then it was late 2021. We booked a trip to Morocco for two weeks. And the day before I started getting really panicky and uh, which isn't common for me, but it was, it was been so long since we traveled. My girlfriend was babysitting a girl and the day of the flight, I was planning, I was thinking that I was going to tell her I couldn't, I just can't get on this plane. It was, it was my rules. My rule was it was Royal Air Maroc. Mm, I don't know. And I was looking at the flight path and it's way more over the ocean than, than going to Ireland or England. And I'm like, I don't know. Oh man. And uh, <laughs> then she came home and she said that the girl she was babysitting tested positive for COVID. And we're like, well, we can't go across the sea then test positive. We can't get back. Oh, but I think ultimately I would have canceled that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you did the, um, the mock disappointment. Oh, oh no. Man. Oh. <laughs> You know, I feel a little sniffly too. Good thing you mentioned that. <laughs> so That's I, great. Yeah. The most expensive mistake, not mistake, the most expensive thing I cost, by that trip I told you where we went to Romania and all that, that was actually not how the flight was supposed to start. We were going from, we were living in LA at the time. We we're going to go from LA to Cope, uh, Oslo. Hmm. And I couldn't get on that flight. I was like 10 hours. I was panicking, freaked out. I was crying in the airport. And my girls were really, really understanding about that. Her, her her anxiety is driving to the same level as mine. I tell her, yeah, but you can pull the car over. We can switch spots. I can't pull the plane over. But yeah. she does understand. She never gives me a hard time. But we left the airport. We got back to our room. And I immediately booked a flight from L.A. to New York and then New York to Dublin because I know I can do that. I broke it up. And I did it. You know, it wasn't mm. easy, but I did it. But that cost me so much. You know what a last-minute flight to Ireland is? <laughs> Not cheap for two no. people. And it was, very, it was the very next morning. So it was like... The next morning we went to New York and then the day after that we went to uh, Ireland. So it's like those tickets were, 
thousands of dollars, not counting the thousands I lost on the flight mm. to Oslo. Yeah, it's yeah. not cheap. Not cheap. I, they're expensive. Uh, I, want, I can't say mistakes because I didn't make a mistake. They're expensive lessons. Mm. But everybody with a fear of flying knows that once that panic hits a certain level, you'll do the dumbest stuff just to avoid it. Yeah. There's so much I want to ask you. Let me think. What should we go sure. with first? Yeah, I, so... I have a theory. I have go a theory. On, and I, I, I wonder if you're... I've, I've had this theory for a while, but I don't have a group of fear of flying people to talk to about it. Like I said, I do. The Facebook chat. I have a theory that those of us that are afraid of flying also are the same kind of people that will buy lottery tickets and scratch-off tickets because they believe in the extremes of possibilities. I wonder if that's true. Because one of my mm. only vices is I, I'll gamble. So I don't, I don't gamble, but that's what I like to do because I really think, you know, if anybody can win, it could be me. And I wonder how many other listeners have that theory. I, I wonder. That's a that's great a... question. That is a... <laughs> I've no idea. I'm, it, you know, and all the research I've read around fear of flying, that's never been linked. You know, yeah. I wonder to get by. <laughs> we believe that there's a possibility that the plane's going to crash or something terrible is going to happen when it's so absolutely outside the scale. That I wonder if everybody also believes positively that much. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> That's my theory. That's a great. And so uh, when we put that in the podcast, right, we'll, when, we, when we, we'll put that in the little notes and just say, what do you Chime reckon? In. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon? That's really, I've, I've never thought about that. That's in my notes. I probably would have forgot about it. Oh, it's my last note that we haven't, well, actually no, it's two notes we haven't addressed yet. One note is um, on these flights, because I used to never get out of my seat. I would never, I wouldn't eat or drink anything the entire day before the flight or the day of the flight. So I was dehydrated because I always get a window seat. Um, so you feel I, even more crap then as well, wouldn't you? So. <laughs> oh, God, yes. I actually – see, I have this uh, – I'll tell your listeners, and, of course, we don't advise it. I have a, a cocktail that I would use to get on planes where the first time I got on a plane comfortably, it was – I took a Xanax before we boarded. Mm. I it, My fear wasn't gone, but it was lessened. And then I took a Tylenol PM or two Tylenol PMs when I'm sitting in my seat. Then when they turned the seat belt – light off i take an ambient and it's an overnight flight and i i've slept through multiple flights eight hours i'll wake up and we're on the ground so it's like it gave me this sense of security like oh yeah i can forget these flights but i'm also not an idiot i know if things do go wrong there could be a problem and oh boy i rambled i was flying from egypt to egypt to rome in 2018 it was a short flight i did that cocktail of drugs i shouldn't have it was five hour flight I woke up halfway through the, pl the flight and I look over at the lady next to me. And I'm like, why, why aren't people freaking out? The entire plane was made of marbles. Every surface was marbles. And the lady was marbles. And then I passed out again. I woke up. The stewardess is shaking me to get up. And I have this huge jug of water in my lap. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? Did I get up around and make a – I'll never know what happened for me to get that water bottle. I learned a lesson. I, I did learn a lesson. <laughs> But so here we go. I'm going to jump back now. <laughs> I remember that. Um, I'm going to jump back to. Um, I just want to say to, something on that because you're, you're sure. that's absolutely right. One of our psychotherapists used to say on the courses I ran before was to say the, the problem with the, the sort of the drug cocktail is that you become then the least eight person able to help yourself in the yeah. extremely unlikely event that you will need to, you know. So I think. So it makes you actually less resourceful. But you sort of you're doing oh, yeah. the the Mr. T from the A team, aren't you? Just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I I took a flight to um, Austin, Texas, from New York, and I did that cocktail. This was I don't do that cocktail like that. Uh, well, took that flight to Austin. It's a three and a half hour flight. Yeah, I got off the plane, and I remember, I remember moments before arriving in my room. I remember like hailing a cab. And getting in the cab being like, I'm not drunk, I swear. And I don't know how I got to, like, that was a lesson learned. Like, you do things because they make you more comfortable. But ultimately, I mean, things could end really badly. Like, you get hit by a car, and especially mm. on Ambien. Ambien has some horrific side effects. People, people die on Ambien by getting in their car and driving, and then they crash. I mean, it's common. It's not rare for people to get into accidents on Ambien. So I don't want to... I don't want to do anything on a plane that's going to put anybody in jeopardy, get up, do anything crazy, embarrass myself or my girl. Or, so I like, I've really, really, really cut back on that. I, I still have done, I still do it. I, I'll be honest on the overnight flights, but uh, I've, I want to put an end to it, but I also want yeah. to sleep on the flight. I mean, on yeah. the way back, it's longer, but it's daytime. So no reason to sleep, but, oh, so 
Yes. <laughs> I try to get rid of the anxiety on these flights to never be able to get up uh, out of my seat. I used to never use the bathroom, all the, all that. And now I make it a point to get up to use the bathroom and I make it a point to walk to the back of the plane to use the bathroom. All right. So and, pause a second. That's sure. significant. How, <laughs> how did you go from sitting by the seat window, not drinking, not eating, to getting up wondering? So what, what's the shift there? It's the podcasts and no Phillips videos. It's it's both of those. And I'm not pandering to either or. They're, I, they're, to me, they're both essential, but that's it. It's it's getting me used to not being afraid and actually putting myself in the mm. uncomfortable zone, not to scare. I'm not going to intentionally terrify myself, but yeah, it, I found the podcast. I found the podcast right after the Morocco trip that I didn't take. So it's a recent development for me to find the podcast and do the desensitization. But since doing all that, it's given me the ability to actually move around. Wow. I want to move around. I, I want to you know how miserable it is to take all these flights and intentionally not eat the food? I don't want the meals. I don't want the drinks. Oh, it's free. I don't want it. I don't want it. I, what I do is I put the blanket on. I have these noise-canceling headphones, which I still wear because they're really comfortable. And I lean against the window. My, my girl knows to tell the people I don't want nothing. And she'll be eating. And she, I, everybody's having such a good time. And I'm so miserable that I can't enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So is that past so, tense? Do you, do you eat and drink now? Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely! I, I, yeah, I matter of fact, a lot of my travel photos now are all the the things. Oh, look at this pizza they gave us! Oh my God, this chocolate's amazing! <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> well, what I we do is we go to the back of the plane because usually my girl will go with me, and we'll use the bathroom in the back of the plane because it's so bumpy back there. At the very tail where the bathroom is, it's like doo -doo 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 -doo. and I she told uh, she's next to me with noise canceling headphones on, but she even told me that we were agreeing. The last flight we were on, it was uh, not last, but. It was um, Royal Jordanian, and we're in the back of the plane, and it's, I mean, it's really, really, it's not big bumps, but it's constant, and we look over, and there's one of the guys on the flight that, that works for them, he's sitting on a seat, and he's reading a book, and it's like, the thing is just jostling, and we're like, look how little he cares, yeah. look how little, he's yeah. so engrossed in what he's reading, meanwhile, somebody like me is like, oh my god, how could you be back here, like, mm. it feels like the, the tail is going to break off, but for him, it was just so mundane, and that helps that really does help yeah you're sort of like finding some normal clues around you that yeah that how other people might be dealing with it yeah that's i good. still don't like i still don't mm. like going to the bathrooms on flights there's something unnatural about standing in a bathroom while the plane's going and you're like oh is the big bump gonna come down and smash my head into the ceiling well i think so, some of that's normal i mean i must admit i go to the loo i'm thinking i'm now i i, I make sure i I stand in a certain way because I think, well, I, there could be a bump. You know, it's not yeah. very, it's not very common that it's going to be enough to disturb me. But so I do think like that. So I think some of these things, you know, are not all bad. It's it's just about working out which ones are sort of helpful or not, isn't it? You know. Yeah. So do you have to sit in the window seat now, or do you sit in an aisle? Um, have to no. I prefer to because I really genuinely uh, like uh, the view. Uh, excuse me a second. <laughs> Sorry, I love yeah. that. <laughs> prefer to yeah don't have I, to. I, uh, actually on this uh, if people look at the facebook update they did on this trip the very next flight i asked my girl because she's used to sitting in the aisle or the middle and i'm like do you want the window seat and she's like yeah I was like so I, I intentionally sat in the aisle Did she fall over she was, she was like, what? <laughs> no but she drove me crazy i was like you never get in the window again because she didn't look out the window the whole flight i'm trying to look and she's like playing on her <laughs> Nintendo or trying to sleep. I'm like, what are you doing? I gave you the window seat. Like, come on, use it. Look at that view out there. Look out the window. <laughs> I annoy her so much. With <laughs> She looked at me. I annoy her so much because every time I'm in the window, I'm like, babe, look. Babe, look. You, look it. Look it. And then she's like on her phone. I'm like, what are you doing? Look. We're flying over Egypt. Look. <laughs> like, so, yeah. Mm. I, 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 I've. Yeah, you so do sound like an flight. annoying passenger. No, no disrespect. Totally. I mean that in the oh, warmest no, way possible. <laughs> I'm annoying on both ends of the spectrum. I'm annoying when I'm terrified, and I'm annoying when I'm not terrified in different <laughs> ways. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, there's, 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 there's a real energy about you. I can understand why doing long flights would be quite. You know, even put the fear to one side. You yeah. move quite quickly. You talk quite quickly. So I can imagine, you know, like someone says, you've got to sit there for ten hours. <laughs> That's like a killer for you, isn't it? It, it honestly it really is and if i take fear out of the equation there's a, a certain level of misery for me being on a plane i just can't stand it i really i enjoy that's why i don't mind the, the hour-long flights because 
oh, we get this fun takeoff, even if it's scary, get this fun takeoff, cruising, going through the clouds, coming down through the clouds, landing. So there's, mm. it's exciting. But when you're up there for seven hours, the 787 Dreamliners, they've been on a couple, like on Norwegian, different flights. They, I swear there is no turbulence. I know there is, but I don't feel anything. Yeah, and even amazing. then, they're amazing. And even then, I just, after a couple, after an hour or two, I can't focus on a movie. I'm bored. I'm just so miserable. And it also, that makes me want to keep taking the sleeping drugs because I can get rid of these hours. But again, I know how dangerous they are and I don't, I, I want, I'm getting rid of it, but they're, like you said, it's hard to sit on a plane for that long. And I am extremely jealous of you guys that live over the pond. You people that live in England and Ireland, you can, you can go to Morocco in two hours. Like it's crazy. You can go to all these amazing countries and here in the states, uh, hang on a sec. You don't. Like, you can't pull that one. You've got everything <laughs> in the states. You know, you've got different time zones. You've got skiing. You've got the beaches. You've got it all there. That's why no bugger wants to leave because you've got it all going on. To, and also, uh -oh. some of the places that we take forever to get to are not that far for you. Like the Bahamas for us is like a, oh, a big yeah. deal. But for you, <laughs> it, it's just like you know, the Mex you're like yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So you're, you're right. so you know what I mean. So you know, it cuts yeah, both right. ways, Frank. <laughs> Ah, you got me you got me there <laughs> um, well, so so what do you think is yet to work on i mean you sound like you've made some significant progress sure. what's what's the kind of the next bits that you want to chip away at <sighs> okay well i want to chip away on the on the ambient completely i need to get rid of that even mm. on overnight flights i need to get rid of it i want every my ultimate goal is to enjoy flying and do it do it for the fun of it I need to get rid of the ambient. I don't mind taking the ones because I take one Xanax before boarding. I don't mind that because it really does calm me down and let my brain work up, uh, not worry, but focus on things that are more important than I'm so scared. I'm so scared. So I don't really need personally, in my opinion, to get rid of the Xanax because I don't use it much, but I do want to get rid of the ambient. Mm -hmm. I want to get rid of the, the, the crutch. It, it's fun to sit in the aisle when I want to. It's I love choosing my meal. It's so stupid, but I love it. Oh, what do you want? Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sure, eating. Drink. Check me out. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoy it. I mean, I watch these YouTubers and I'm so jealous of that life. I like, mm. so yeah, my, the thing I need to do is I need to work on getting rid of the Ambien. And I, it's going to sound, I hope nobody takes this the wrong way, but it's almost like alcohol, alcoholism. I can never be complacent. Like I need to always keep working on it, keep listening to the podcast, keep watching the videos before the flights, because what happens when I don't is I don't go to Ireland. <laughs> I don't get on the flight because I didn't do my routine. And then day comes and everything feels new and scary when if I do my routines, it's mundane. So I, I, I've got several takes on that. So I don't think there's sure. anything wrong with what you just said. And I do agree in some ways it is, it is like dealing with an addiction of some sort because the fear is is very powerful and it needs feeding and so the choices are you know if you have a little ritual that gets you to get on board the aircraft and eventually that you'll stop doing that because you won't need it as much so yeah because yeah. but the other thing is that uh there's nothing there's nothing wrong with preparing for something which is important. So if you're going to go and do anything else, if you're going to go and do a presentation or you're going to go and do something which requires you to act, do something different to the norm, you'd prepare for it. Right. And so doing the, so I think you're right. Yeah. That people who are, have had a fear of flying do need to keep doing some prep. It will just become less and less. You would need, it will just be more like a top up. At the moment, yeah. you're still yeah. kind of doing quite a lot of work, but you've made some amazing you've made significant progress. I mean, don't underestimate the thing about being able to walk around the aircraft and eat and drink. These are huge yeah. things for people, you know? Yeah. Funny thing is I actually fell into a crutch I never had before the podcast. <laughs> people talking about flight radar and... No, no. Yeah, sorry I never, a flight radar actually helps me because yeah. we, we were uh, about to get a, a flight that they told us was going to be bumpy. And I intentionally looked at the landing with watching other planes. I'm like, that plane landed. Well, guess yeah. what? That means it's fine. So yeah, that helps, exactly. but Turbuli didn't. No, I, don't, I, I wouldn't recommend it. And if anybody's listening, well, if anybody's listening, whoever's listening, 
mm-hmm. I wholeheartedly say don't wa- don't watch it and look at it because it did predict a really really it was like moderate to high intensity mm-hmm. turbulence and, and it was the smooth, literally the smoothest landing of this whole yeah. trip. Yeah, I don't trust so, it. Uh, no disrespect to people who set it up. I know why they've done it. Yeah, but flight radar, you know, there's. I think it's a fantastic tool uh, as long as you don't get addicted to it. But it does. I think that some people have found it quite helpful. You know, they know they're going to be doing a flight a certain route. It's just to say, watch it. You know, once a day, just look at it. Go like yeah. see how normal it is. Just that flight. That's my flight. I'm going to do that in a week. And then by the time you come to fly, you've already thought about that. I don't think the turbulence apps are particularly helpful. There's lots of no. them out there and they're not as good as the ones the pilots and the flight planners use. Yeah. So, I, and, <laughs> and it's not your job. It doesn't matter. So whether it says it's a storm cloud, yeah. whether it says, what are you going to do? You know, yeah, exactly. the pilot, so, like, are you all over this? I'm going to knock, uh, I'm going to do the bell and the, the, the lady will come out. They're like, can you tell him it's going to be bumpy? Cause I'm not sure he knows. No, exactly. <laughs> can we go to a different airport? <laughs> Yeah, the yeah, uh, the flight, love the flight that, the radar. Pilots. Yeah, backseat oh, oh, yeah. bloody pilots. <laughs> <laughs> backseat flying. Um, I I did uh, I did find a lot of help in flight radar. Every single time I was going to fly on on this trip, we had seven flights. I looked at it that day and I zoomed out, and it mm. shows you how many planes are in the air at that time. And it's like ten thousand. There's ten thousand there. Like, so it that helped. I looked at it. I'm like, yeah, that's a lot of planes up in the yeah, air at yeah. this very moment. So that yeah. that did help quite a bit. It does kind of put it into perspective that every flight has been planned and controlled and thought yeah. about, but you're just one of many. You know, somebody said the other day I was talking to him, he said, I realize I'm not that special. I like to say, <laughs> maybe I thought I was and I had more power than I, you know, actually do. But I thought that, you know, because I don't like it, that that makes that flight unsafe. But yeah. I realize I don't have that power. Yeah. It's the the worst thing anybody and you you know this. The worst thing anybody can tell somebody afraid of flying is it's safer than driving. Shut up, shut up. Mm. We know we know it's, yeah. it's safer. We know it's the safest form of travel, but it's not a lo- lo- logical fear, and we all know that. I it drives me crazy when people tell me that like it's the safest form. Of, I know that doesn't help me. <laughs> it's not like oh wait you know what I hadn't thought about it that way. Let me go get on the flight. That drives me crazy, and I, and they're trying to be helpful, but. That does not help. <laughs> no, I agree. And, you know, so, I've, so many times I've heard people say, oh, you got more chance of being kicked to death by a donkey. It's just like, <laughs> what's that got to do with anything? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> really? I haven't seen it. Don- I've never seen a donkey in person. So, <laughs> you know, like, it's just, I, I don't like, yeah. I've never really used statistics. I mean, I think the mathematical models are quite interesting. And I did help somebody once on a one-to-one level who was, like double PhD in maths, and he was doing another one for for recreation in the evening. And he said, I've been through all the stats. And he said, and uh, they stand up. I was yeah, like, well, oh, okay. if, you, right. if you're happy with it, then, you know. And I just thought that was quite, quite real. But the reality is there is a tiny, tiny, tiny risk, but it's just there's risk to everything, isn't there? It's just sure. like you can't, sure. like, limit your life on something where there is a very tiny risk where we yeah. take massive risks all the time and don't think about it. That's just, that, that yeah. to me doesn't make any sense. You know, I enjoy vodka too much on the weekends and that is way more risky. I'm going to, you're risking stomach cancer. You're risking falling, hitting your head. You're just, yeah. Yeah. There's just things that I will intentionally put myself at risk at and not think twice about it. Things that are way more dangerous and by far more likely to kill me, but I don't think about it. Like you said, I nice. thought of another safety behavior I did that I, oh, right, I, okay. I haven't yeah. done it in so long. I forgot about it, actually. Mm-hmm. It, the day of the flight on the way to the airport until we land, my girl was not allowed to talk to me. And she knew that. And, and she was cool about it. But if she, if she said, if and it happened, we'll be on a flight. And she's like, are you doing okay? That will instantly make the fear skyrocket. Because if, she, if you're, she's telling me, am I okay? There's a reason not to be okay. That's what, my, that's what I would think. So when we'd get on the plane, when we'd sit, when we take off, she would never talk to me. And it wasn't a mean thing. It was the, I can't talk to you. I can't no. talk to anybody. And now she's like, shut up. I'm trying to sleep. Shut up. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I forgot I, I did that though. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's quite a common one actually, because you're oh, yeah. trying to process you're, Yeah. You're dealing with intrusive thoughts and just stuff. And so someone else talking to you, helpful, not helpful, whatever, just is extra noise to cope with. And, uh, and you just want to shut everything out. So it's, yeah. it's quite so that's impressive that 
and she's probably wishing it's back to the old days that you had that. Oh one. yes, yes. I used yes. to love it when I didn't. I wasn't allowed to talk to you, and now you don't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah, just go to sleep. I'll, and she would always eat my meal too. She'd get the meals, and then just, then she have two meals. <laughs> yeah, now she doesn't get that anymore. <laughs> that is funny. So, so you've sound like you've done you put a lot of work in when you do the flights but just so yeah. and this isn't self-endorsement i just want to know from the pot which is there any particular podcast that either you think the really good go-tos or is there one sure. that you noticed was a turning point for you now the beauty of that question is i've been keeping notes to talk about and i forgot to write those podcasts down <laughs> like the, and the thing is you ask every guest and i was like oh they never have the answer. I'm going to have the answer. But the funny thing is I have a bit of an answer because I keep my favorite ones downloaded. So I'm opening up the app right now. Okay. So yeah. Episode was... 21. Okay. What happens about, on that one? You're talking about tips with about turbulence and it, it helps. My favorite one is right here. Let's see. Episode 55 with Captain Steve talking about flying at night. I love that one. Okay. Because a lot of people, I do a lot of flying at night going over the seas and that helps that that one just to me because i'm always in jfk it's always a 10 o'clock flight and i'm always listening to that and it's funny that um so many people are scared of flying at night i always found it to be less scary than flying in the day and i never thought about how it should be scary because you can't see anything but i always like oh it's, i get to sleep <laughs> um there's gonna be less turbulence because of storms and stuff like that um and your audiobook right after that which is episode 69 that one i keep on there and i listen to it a lot I want you to do another book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I, I, I have to say, I, I don't know if I've confessed this. I might have said it to Hannah when I was interviewing her once. But I had, it's, it's actually quite a pressure to have podcasts each week, but I was determined to have one a week. So each yeah. one, so if I, if it's an hour podcast, I, I do the editing myself because I don't, you know, we try to keep everything costs down, you know, so sure. we don't have to pass it on to others. And it can take me anything up to three hours to edit you know like wow. it depends how much someone does like weird noises or something you know because some mm. people <laughs> uh, but you know you listen through to it so yeah it's about one to three sort of ratio yeah but there was one week i was just exhausted and i'd done the audio book before and i just thought oh i'll just stick that on <laughs> <laughs> so wow. it was a real it was because i was feeling lazy i couldn't be, like i, I don't just couldn't think it. what to do and actually it's turned out that people really appreciated that so i'm i'm really chuffed to hear that frank it's, uh... it's a it's a great one and the other it's not a go-to but i save most of the ones with pilots most of the ones where you have the pilots on I, mm. the, those are the ones i like to listen to or whatever i do like to hear people's beating their fear and i listen to them all but the yeah. ones i go back to are the pilots yeah what is it about the pilot ones that you find helpful they're they're so nonchalant talking about flying and about fear of flying and I'm sorry, but I'm terrible with names. So I don't know all their names, but they, they actually, I would say every single person on your pod, all the pilots, they're so understanding. It's like, mm. yes, I, I don't have that fear, but I care about you and I want to help you get through it. And they'll just, it's comforting. It's comforting to hear somebody because I'm not in control. It's comforting to hear the people that are in control. They care and they're so good at what they do. Um, Mm. there's a part of me that always i'm not stupid i know that they're pilots that are flying planes even when i was afraid i know that they know what they're doing but you can't talk to the now no. you can't really talk to the pilots no, you right. can't say hey yeah so there's a disconnect that gets reconnected when the pilots come on your podcast mm. uh, i really i i like it it's comforting to me no that's nice to know yeah i try to get try to get a mixture so i like i like people's stories because i've learned I mean, from the pilots, I learned the odd thing here and there because obviously we listened to them for 20 odd years. So there's not tons of stuff that they say that I don't know, but oh, yeah, I still, yeah. they need to say it because they're the ones that do the job. And if I do it, I'll be doing it in a sort of a shortcut way, which won't do it justice. But the people who I I get the most from are the people like you who come on and share their story and then what they've done how they yeah. got over it because it seems to be it's different for everybody and everyone's little technique or tips are just brilliant and that's so i love those so for me it's the I, you know the pilots are great i mean don't get me wrong i like <laughs> getting them on but it's it's people like you that share their stories where you've overcome it right. and sometimes when it's so extreme you know like not being able to get out your seat and not eat drink have a blanket over you do not disturb don't talk to me 
Don't talk and here to me. you are walking about, eating and drinking, you know, taking photos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too many photos. I'm always deleting so many photos of the wing. You're like, what did I take a picture of? There's nothing to see. Like, why did I take that picture? Well, I uh, love them. I was quite jealous. I think it might be the one in Jordan. I saw you and I thought, oh, I'd love to go there. It was, that was my favorite thing on this whole trip. I've been to Egypt before, but I, I still love Egypt. Uh, Switzerland, beautiful. But walking into Petra in Jordan mm. is one of the most incredible things I've ever done. I want to say it's the most, but I'm not sure. It's yeah. one of the, when you walk uh, through the canyon and you've been walking for a half hour and it's gigantic canyon, you can barely see the sky. And then you see the um, the uh, treasury of Petra, but you just see it through a crack and it's so monumentally huge. It's like yeah. you you don't see anything like that in your normal day to day. And as you walk in, it opens up and the light hits it. Cause it's in this, oh, it's incredible. Everybody should go there. I want to go there. I, I, Cause I think they've got it in the, one of the Indiana Jones films and I'm yeah, looking at it thinking, yeah, 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 I think I've got to go there, you know? And so when I saw you were going there mm-hmm. showing off, you flash bastard, I thought I, must, <laughs> I need to do that. <laughs> You'll have to go with me next time I go. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I will go back. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's just oh, outstanding. As long as you don't talk to me the whole time, that's the thing. You yeah. know? And let me <laughs> hey, get I'm by the window. Quiet. <laughs> nah, something like that, I'm pretty quiet. Well, I'm I think like, we'd be oh, a good wow. combo because I'm an. I prefer the aisle. I can't be doing looking at. I don't mind oh, bother about looking out the window. I like to sit in the aisle because I like to get up and walk about. So I get really restless, you know. So yeah, there you I go. Perfect, that. perfect combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we were good travel buddies. All right. So what I was going to say then. Just to sort of wrap up, you know, sure. you know, you've listened to them all now. You can probably know what I'm about to say, but I, I like a sort of like a tip or a last message that you'd like to give to someone who might be listening. Go, yeah, yeah, it's all right for you, but dot, dot, dot. Honestly, my tip is over inundate yourself with flying content before you fly. Look at Noel Phillips. Look at Jeb Brooks, J-E-B. Look at Jeb Brooks, Noel Phillips. A lot of these YouTubers, they'll show videos of them in first class. And that's not fine. Okay, fine. But I'm never going to fly first class. And I'm not interested in that experience. Noel Phillips, specifically, he usually doesn't fly on first class. But even when he does, it's not about that. It's about, he'll tell about the history of the plane. Like, oh, this one was bought, you know, for, for Saudi Arabian Airlines. And it went to da, da, da. And just do that. Just bore yourself with it. Listen to every podcast you can listen to. And just keep keep flooding yourself with it. And then when the time comes, you'll have all the answers in your head of what's going to go on, what's happening. You'll be so used to hearing the sound of the engines and the play and the seats. Do that. Do that. Almost make it annoying. Dude, like I would fall asleep, literally fall asleep um, with the, my phone in my hand with my earbuds in watching flight videos where just engine noise and then talking about oh this meal is good and i'll fall i li- that's literally happened multiple times that's my tip my tip is to don't i mean you do what you got to do but i wouldn't listen to one podcast a day i would listen all day at work i can have my earbuds in so i'll listen to eight hours of podcasts and videos and everything so that's my wow. tip is is flood yourself with flight information I love and block that. those suggestions that have oh this plane turbulent block those <laughs> mm. that doesn't help anybody i can't there's got to be there should be an algorithm to for people that are searching for fear of flying not to show those videos that's so crazy yeah. yeah and all you need to do is to see one picture and you're like well i need to know what happened on that flight yeah. so i can be prepared for it so i don't fly on that airline you know yeah. it's, it's, it's so it's so t- seductive isn't it i mean the it stuff really i get the algorithms i get is all the uh competitors their courses and their dates <laughs> which i don't care about i don't want to know <laughs> Even when I was running the the courses with flights and stuff for Virgin before, um, I used to say to my colleagues and stuff, keep an eye on what they do, but don't be, don't, you know, it's the tail wagging the dog. You know, we've got to focus yeah. on doing what we do and try and do a good job and just keep a, like an eye just to make in case there's any sort of major innovations come out. But right. otherwise, you know, just focus, stay in your own lane. There's no, to, there's yeah. enough people out there to be helped. Just do if you that. Co- if you copy their content, you're just going to get their scraps of people who don't want to watch their stuff. Like you got to be completely different. Yeah. That's it. Like, you know, uh, I really quick, I apologize. Uh, that's right. It made me think of, <clears throat> so recently there's, there was a, a really famous airline video where they encountered a lot of hail. I'm not going to get too descriptive about it, but the, the, the flight shop from inside the, the video shop from inside the plane looked pretty horrific and then the photos of the plane on the ground and then they're walking around you see how the nose is all smashed up 
and actually didn't make me scared. It did the exact opposite, which surprised me because mm-hmm. I was like, man, that plane was really beat badly by the hail. I blew out the windows and it landed yeah. and it, everybody was safe. It went through things that I would never dream of and mm-hmm. it landed. So that mm-hmm. was actually comforting to me. Yeah. I, I shouldn't have watched the video, but it was comforting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and also, because, and like, if you don't know, so I've seen pictures where they, the media showed, you know, the nose cone all broken up, but it's meant to be, it's meant to be thin because there's, yeah. there's radar behind it, you know? So, you, yeah. but if you don't know that, it looks very dramatic. You think but it's like a tank. <laughs> Yeah. I really liked um, the errands. Did, I don't know if you listened to it, the, the test pilot guy that was out last week. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's just like, telling me some of the stories he said afterwards is the stuff i can't tell you he said i said well yeah well that's i said it wouldn't scare people actually because you're you're not taking passengers up you're going up testing yeah. the aircraft so that yep. then you can tell captains and pilots to say okay you know don't try and take off with 50 50 knots of crosswind because it's going to be horrible so do you, yeah. then you set it for 30 or 40, you know. So you doing that, then it knows it gives us like what's the outer marker. It's still doable, but you wouldn't want to be in that flight. Yeah. Bring it right into it so that they stay within that safety envelope. So, yeah. yeah. Paul, you actually you actually made me think of the one tip I wanted to give people and I forgot about it and you reminded me about it. Excellent. Two, Let's have it. Then. <laughs> two things that I always think about that really actually make me feel comfortable. Tip number one is I was watching one of those hurricane videos where they fly the plane through the hurricane and they're inside the wall of the hurricane. What the video didn't make me feel comfortable. What made me feel comfortable is reading that they don't modify the plane at all to fly through a hurricane. The plane Correct. you fly to Paris on is the same plane they fly into the eye of a hurricane. They just put radar on it. That makes me feel comfortable because they'll fly in a hurricane. And the other one is well, a pilot was talking. I don't know if it was on your podcast, but he was talking about how when he flies cargo, because a lot of times he'll fly passengers, when he flies cargo, he doesn't even try to avoid this, the turbulence. He doesn't care. He goes, he'll only avoid it for our comfort. But he goes, when I'm flying cargo, I, I don't go around it. I just stay right in it because I don't care. And I was like, oh, yeah. So those two things I think about a lot. And I yeah. think they really do help me. Yeah, that is, those are really good tips. And yeah, that is one of the pilots that said that. It has, yeah. That has been said on one of the podcasts, but it's probably no doubt. There's a lot of free information out there now. I've, yeah. You know, much more so than when I first started 25 years ago. There was bugger all around, and now everybody who's a helpful captain or cabin crew or whatever is now doing fear of flying help. So there's a ton of stuff out there. The tricky part is finding the thing that works for you. And and I love yeah, the fact that yeah. you can get like Noel Phillips and people like that are putting stuff out there that you can just you know it's safe. You can go and yeah. watch it. It's not going to say anything that's going to trigger you. I think that's brilliant. No, nah, no, nah, no. If if everybody gets goes and watches Noel's videos, he doesn't say anything. He's he's the happiest guy in the world. And he did a video where he he had to he had to fly. I think it was six flights, the six of the cheapest flights he could find. And so his wife would book the flights. He'd get to the airport, open it up, find out what flight he's on and where he's going. You know, we can't do that. People are scared of flying. Like, what? I don't. I need to know what airline I'm flying on. I need to know their crash yeah. rate. Like, I need. Yeah. But he'll do like, oh, I'm going to the Philippines because it only cost me twenty five dollars. See ya. I, like that helps a lot. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe that's uh, that's yeah. your future position. You know, like that. You'll get there one day. You, especially the work you're putting in. I think you'll get yeah. to the point where it's going to become less and less of a thing because that's just yeah. the way it is. You know. You know, it does decrease. I really do appreciate your help, and I you help a lot of people, and and, and that means a lot to me. Thank you, Frank. That's very kind. I'm, I don't like compliments, so I'll just move on. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Frank Sanders, like <laughs> you're amazing, mate. Thank, Thank you, you very, Thank very you. much. That's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you for listening to the Love Fly podcast. And if you want to find out about more that we do, please go to our website, lovefly.co.uk. 
and you'll see a list of other options available to you should you need them. Thanks for listening.